Hello, Alex here, and today we're going to talk about my first roll of Kodak's Portra 400 film stock, which I shot in 35mm format in the Nikon F100 last year. Let's get into it. Kodak's Portra films come in three flavors, Portra 160, Portra 400, and Portra 800. Portra 400 obviously being what we're talking about today. It's available in 35mm and 120 format, as well as 4x5 and 8x10 sheet film format. It's not available in Super 8 or Super 16 formats like some of their other films like Ektachrome are. The film unsurprisingly has an ISO rating of 400 and the cartridges are DX coded. The three portrait films alongside Kodak's Ektar 100 make up the color negative portion of Kodak's professional film range. And Kodak have put these color negative films on a set of four scales, which I'll put up here. So we can see that Portra 400 has medium grain, contrast and saturation within the line, standing very far away from Ektar in most situations, except sharpness, where it is sharper than the other Portra films and not as sharp as Ektar, but quite up there. And I think being so close to Ektar is quite impressive for a 400 speed film. So I mentioned that this film is a color negative film. Portra 400, like all color negative films, is designed for development in the C41 chemical process. This is the standard process that you'll have available at your local lab. It's called negative film because you get negatives out the end. You don't get positive images like with slide film, and these have to be inverted in some way, either during scanning or the printing process to yield your final image. So with that out of the way, let's talk about my role of this film. So I shot this roll in the Nikon F100, mostly with the 24 to 70 millimeter F2.8, but also at times with the 35 millimeter F1.4 or 58 millimeter F1.4 prime lenses. I shot this film on a holiday down to County Clare to visit my uncle last year with my family. And this was in line with the COVID-19 guidelines at the time because the rate of cases and infections in Ireland was quite low then. The reasons I chose Portra 400 for this trip were pretty simple. I'd never shot it before. I was able to get a good deal on a five pack, which made it much more affordable because it is a very expensive film as we'll talk about. And I knew that it had excellent dynamic range and we don't get a lot of really intense sun here in Ireland, but it was a week of just pure, wonderful sunny weather. And I wanted to make sure I was able to get good latitude in both the highlights and the shadows. And as I'll get into later, the latitude is excellent on this film stock and it was definitely the right choice. Something to note is that I was using an Epson V600 scanner at this time, and I wasn't really getting on well with it. I did eventually sell it. I mean, it's a good scanner for 120 format, but I don't think it's very good for 35 millimeter. I've since moved to DSLR scanning because I find that to be much more effective, but the colors in a lot of these shots aren't great and they're very inconsistent across the whole roll. So that's on me, that's not the film. And that's just a limitation of me and my equipment at the time. The first and most important pro I want to talk about, in my opinion, is the sharpness. This film renders extremely fine detail, which balances very well with the grain without in any way overpowering the resolution of your image. It works really nicely. Even in 35mm, where you're working with a very small frame, you're getting a lot of detail. As I mentioned, this film has incredible dynamic range. Your latitude in both the highlights and the shadows is completely unparalleled against anything I've seen in the color negative space. You can probably get away with black and white negative film a bit more easily, but within color film, nah, this just blows everything out of the water. That's one of the reasons this film is so popular for wedding photographers. You can deal with very high contrast situations and your metering doesn't have to be absolutely 100% spot on. You can still recover the images, which is really useful. Portra, portrait. This film is designed for portraiture at its heart. And while I can't show you the pictures because none of the family members in question were happy with me putting their pictures online for this video, which is fine, the skin tones do come out very nice. You get nice tones in both pale and dark skin, 
without going ridiculously like sunburned kind of looking like you get with Ektar, which is really not that great for portraiture, at least portraiture of Caucasian people, in my opinion. I think portrait works really well and it did work really well. Again, I just can't show you the pictures. The color palette of this film in general is very flexible. So you can kind of do whatever you want with it. People talk about the pastel look that you get when overexposing it. That's fine, you can do that. But you can make it look like pretty much whatever you want with relatively little post-processing work. It's very malleable in that sense and I think that's a good way of putting it. It's really easy to work with, which helps you get just about anything for it. That's one of the reasons it's become such a, a meme, you know. Lots of people use it for whatever they want because you can, right? You get good sharpness, good dynamic range, and colors that can do whatever under a variety of lighting sources. Why wouldn't you? Apart from the cost, obviously. Lastly, and this is a small one, the film basically doesn't curl at all, right? So a lot of films will laterally or longitudinally curl, which makes it very hard to scan them, so you have to flatten them with a heavy weight for a long time. But this film, it's completely flat after drying. It's really good, it's really easy to work with, and I really highly recommend it for that. Yeah, so I've alluded to this a couple of times already, but this film is expensive. It's about 15 euros per roll for both uh, 35 millimeter and 120. I think it's a little bit cheaper in 120, but it's still expensive. Like, Ultramax is the, probably the closest 400 speed color negative film you can get to this in 35 millimeter anyway. And that's a lot cheaper, which I'll get to in a bit. Um, it's a very expensive film and it's pretty much your only option for medium speed or high speed, depending on how old you are, color negative film in the 120 format at the moment, which is pretty crap, to be honest. Yeah, this is, a, this is a small con, but you don't actually have a specified reciprocity factor in the spec sheet for this film. All Kodak say is that you need to consider reciprocity above one second, but as for the actual reciprocity factor, <laughs> go figure it out. That's pretty much what they say. Lastly, and this is a really minor one, and it depends what kind of circles you work in, some people won't take you seriously if you're shooting portrait for things that aren't portraits they shouldn't be listened to because it's a film just as anything else. I mean, if they take a portrait on Ektar, they are also wrong, you know, by their own standards. So do whatever you want, but there are some people out there who will jeer at you pretty much for using this film. And that's just something to bear in mind, I guess, if you plan on shooting a lot of this film. So, this first picture here, I took this just down at La Hinge Beach and it's nothing spectacular. I think I took this at about 35 millimeter on the 24 to 70. Tough to meter, you can see there's not a lot of detail up here in the edge of the cliff, but it's not the end of the world. And um, it's quite nice shot overall, just this lone figure braving the ocean so he can fish and have something to eat. I mean, it's a pretty well-built town. He's not doing this for subsistence reasons, it's for entertainment. It's not the most artistic frame, but I do quite like it because he's framed between cliffs, rocky beach, and the ocean itself, and he's standing proud in the middle of all that. So there's there's something to the picture. Oh, I really like this picture. This was taken just at sunset on the night that we arrived, and just this pole sitting behind my uncle's garden, and it just came out really nicely, I think. You've got actual power lines going off in different directions, but you have different layers between the sky, the power that kind of keeps this rural area connected to the rest of the world. I know that's very artsy, pretentious, but it's true. And because this is, but it's, but it's, I know it's very artsy and pretentious, but it's, it's absolutely true. This is a very rural part of the country. And then you have the hill and the bushes that kind of mark off the edge of his territory, his property. And I think it's just a quite nice shot to look at. The bouquet in the front, it's it's pretty okay. It's not too distracting, but it could be nicer. This shot. This is my favourite shot of the roll by far. So when we were walking down the promenade at La Hinch Beach, we came across, just by chance, um, a new crowd of people heading out for surf lessons down at the surf school. Um, I asked for forgiveness, not permission to take the picture. No one minded. Um, it was pretty cool. 
just to see this crowd of people who are off to get surfing lessons, walking in pairs with the surfing boards under their arms. That's how you carry them, apparently. And I thought the car was kind of distracting at first, but then, you know, it's it's all red. You know, they're in red uniforms, the building itself and the flags are red, and then the car is red. So it all blends together pretty nicely. And it's a very stark contrast to the blue and yellow tones, well, blue and beige that you see around. So it just makes for a kind of a visually appealing image in my opinion. If you want to shoot 400 speed color negative film and you want the highest quality you can get, this is the go-to. If you shoot 120, it's your only option to go to. And if you're in 35 millimeter, you might be able to get away with Ultramax instead if you don't need, to a lesser extent, the sharpness, but mainly the shadow uh, latitude. I mean, Portra retains a lot more detail in the shadows, but it costs twice as much as Ultramax. So swings and roundabouts, as they say. Yeah, it's hard not to recommend this film, to be perfectly honest. I mean, ignoring the fact that it's your only 400 speed color negative option in 120. It's a really good film. You've got excellent sharpness, excellent dynamic range, really malleable colors. Like people talk about HP5 as a black and white film that you can do basically anything with because it scans and develops with a very broad range of gray tones that you can tweak to suit your needs. This is basically the same thing in color film, except twice the cost of HP5. You can do whatever you want with it. And there's a reason that it's become so popular. Uh, some people seem to just hate it because it is popular. You know, they find reasons not to like it. Whatever, don't listen to them. Um, if you didn't tell them you were shooting Portra 400, those kind of people probably wouldn't know anyway, to be perfectly honest. So look, thank you for joining me on this video where we talked about my first roll of Kodak's Portra 400 film, which I shot in 35mm. If you like the channel, please consider subscribing or even donating to my Patreon where the tiers start at just one euro per month. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at shaka1277 for new pictures every single day. We're going to wrap this video up with the rest of the images from the roll in a bit of a gallery. Take care. Bye for now.